Hi there. So I'm going to be doing something a little different here. I'm going to be trying a little podcast sort of thing where I just speak my mind for a little bit. There aren't that many podcasts to do with us at the moment. There is the us talk and then there is the circle talk which was started earlier this week. But other than that, there's not really someone who's just speaking their mind as an individual person. So I'm going to be trying this and like any other podcast, I would probably recommend you to just listen to this in the background rather than just watch the video but you can if you want to I'm probably going to put some gameplay in the background or something like that. One of these days I'm probably going to be saying something controversial even though I don't really want to but that's probably inevitable but I'm going to be starting this one off with a topic which is hopefully not that controversial at all which is storyboarding. So storyboarding is a thing which is just really impressive in us overall. It's amazing to watch and the amount of work that gets put into storyboarding is just immense and one of the main reasons why is because it's just so hard to get into storyboarding mainly because the editor the in-game editor for storyboarding is just rubbish i mean i've tried storyboarding i actually started off storyboarding trying it in the editor and it's just unintuitive and just broken in some places. For example, if you press the escape button whilst making changes in the storyboard without making changes to the actual map, you will just back out of the editor without saving, without any warning. Because if you make changes in the editor, it only detects changes to the .osu file. And if you're changing a storyboard, you're making changes to the .osb file, so when you're backing out, It doesn't detect that so you'll just back out and possibly lose hours of work. The other reason why storyboarding is just so hard to get into is because storyboarding requires a completely different set of skills to normal mapping in US. For example in US all you need to learn is to be able to play the game and to just learn what the tools and the editor does. While for storyboarding you will need to know things like graphic design to create your storyboard elements and you might need to know some programming to be able to know how the scripting works in the .osb file because because the editor is so terrible most people just edit the .osb file directly either by just typing all the commands out by hand or by using other programming languages to generate their osb files for them. The other problem with storyboards is that they are really underappreciated. Most people play with 100% background dim and probably turn the storyboard off as well, which is fair enough because some storyboards can be quite distracting. In fact, the normal background can be distracting as well depending on how terrible your skin is. But that's a real shame because that means no one notices a storyboard. You can't see the storyboard whilst the map is being played and most people just forget the storyboards are even there. I think even on a website they stopped marking maps by storyboards for some reason. I think the last map that has a storyboard marked on it was in 2012 when you list the maps by storyboards anyway which is a real shame really in my opinion. People put so much effort into these storyboards and they look amazing and a lot of people don't even know they're there unless they get pointed out. Because they're so underappreciated and they're so hard to get into There aren't that many storyboarders out there. The skills you need for storyboarding, you need to be able to understand code, you need to understand some sort of graphic design, you need to have some sort of creativity in mind. It's really hard to be a storyboarder and there's so much work for just so little reward because most of the time the storyboarders are just forgotten. You have the mapper's name and they get some credit but it's hard to give credit to a storyboarder. You can even put your name on a storyboard but people just turn off the storyboard so you won't be able to see that. But you can put their storyboard name in the tags or the description of the map but you can't really see that from in-game either. The creativity aspect of it probably puts a lot of people off as well at getting good at storyboarding. With mapping you have some rules. You'll want to follow the music in some form and you have the ranking criteria to back that up as well. With storyboarding, you have so much freedom. You have a size limit and then you can't go over a certain storyboard load for an extended period of time. But other than that, everything is pretty much free game. 
and people can struggle with ideas for what they can do with a storyboard but at the same time that gives rise to so much potential for amazing storyboards. Storyboarding requires much more steps as well. For mapping you just place notes in the map and once you get to the end that's either it or you can make more difficulties. Whereas storyboarding you have your planning phase where you need to plan out what you're doing for your storyboard either in your mind or you could write it down. You have the designing phase where you need to design your storyboard sprites or find them someplace on the internet. And then you have your execution phase where you need to start writing your code either through other programming languages or through the .osp file or you could do it in the editor if you so wish to. And that requires so much more effort than mapping that it just puts people off for something optional and something underappreciated. Not many people really want to do that. Storyboards were there originally so that you can create, well, stories for your beatmaps. In the original DS game Os Tatake Odan, for which the game was inspired from, whilst you were playing your beatmaps, they had dancers in the background whilst they were solving some kind of problems people were running into. I'm not entirely sure. I actually haven't played the game myself, but it was something along those lines. The Don't Stop Me Now beatmap is a replica from the original game I believe and that is how storyboarding was supposed to be but people didn't really bother because of how much effort it takes and for the most part storyboarding is just kind of an extra that people don't really bother with. I know for the Nightcore maps a lot of the beat maps have storyboards where it's just a pulsing background during the key eye time and I think even some old maps had prompt saying the slide of a lot is going to speed up here or there's going to be jumps here in a second for example but because people play with background dim people aren't going to be able to see them so that's pretty much pointless these days. So for most of us's lifetime storyboarding wasn't that impressive. I can't really name that many storyboards before 2014 that I would say is pretty good by today's standard anyway. A lot of them were just pulsing backgrounds or you might see the odd one with lyrics and such, but other than that there isn't really much. I think it wasn't until EOS came along from 11T that people did not know the potential of storyboard, and 11T showed that by creating such a beautiful storyboard that looked like it came from a high definition video of some sort. I think before 11T it was mainly Suriru and K2J who were leading the storyboard front of their times, but their storyboards compared to today's standards are pretty much nothing because 11T showed the world how amazing storyboards can be and since then storyboarding has evolved so much, there's so many amazing storyboards out there these days. 11T was actually the reason why I actually gave storyboarding a go in the first place. I saw his storyboards and then whilst I was trying to rank my first map I had the brilliant idea of trying storyboarding myself. Even though I had a bubble at the time, I thought, let's try storyboarding, and my first storyboard is terrible in my opinion. I went for the generic pulsing backgrounds like the Nightcore maps, and if I could go back and change it, I would. I would redo it completely because I hate that storyboard. It is terrible, but I'm digressing. I and probably many other people were inspired by 11T storyboards, and so when the sad news came from 11T about his passing, I was really sad at the time. I actually don't usually get sad about people's passings but 11T was different. He was actually an inspiration to me to start storyboarding. Not only that, 11T was also a person about my age and he had so much talent so hearing that for the first time really hit me close. But thanks to his inspiration I have learnt how to storyboard and I would not go back on it at all. And then we also have so many other people out there who are storyboarding actively and they are way more talented than I am. We have people like Exile and YFBMP leading the front of storyboarding for example. The evolution of storyboarding has its problems as well though. You can create 3D models in storyboards these days as well, which is pretty mind-blowing if you think about it. But if you look at the storyboard for Louder Machine, at the end of that there is the 3D model of a human that spins around, which is pretty cool. But the storyboard for that is 592,000 lines of script, which is 
just a bit over 16 megabytes in file size. The MP3 for that song is only 2.5 megabytes and the BMAP submission system actually doesn't allow you to upload maps that are larger than 30 megabytes and the storyboard script alone takes up more than half of what you are allowed for a beats map, which is just staggering. I think the beat map's only two minutes long as well, so if it were any longer then you might have problems with trying to compress it into 30 megabytes. It's not just the intricate storyboards that do that either. Even Okairi in the Sai, which in my opinion is much more simple of a storyboard in comparison to Louder Machine, also just takes up 336,000 lines of code, or about 12 megabytes, so even that is a pretty large file for a beatmap. So storyboards today are getting a lot more attention, which is a great thing. They are looking much more impressive and much more people are noticing them, and even the amount of storyboarders are going up. But even despite this, storyboarding is still a really small part of the mapping community. If you look at Mapper's Choice Awards by Hanson, if you look at the number of nominees in the storyboarder section, they actually have the least amount of nominees through all of the sections with only 24. The number of nominees for maps with storyboards is also the lowest in the map section with only 35, because despite storyboarding being on the increase, there just aren't that many storyboards out there because of how little storyboarders there are and how much effort it takes to make a storyboard. I mentioned earlier how it's harder to find storyboards through the website because for some reason they stopped marking storyboards for new maps, but recently there is a new website called osb.moe which is created by a group of storyboarders. It's there to create a community of storyboarders so that people can share their storyboards and also help people to learn how to storyboard. So I would definitely go and check that out if you can. So there's two main things people don't like about modern storyboards. The first one being a main problem with Excel storyboards, which is they just are so intricate. They take up so much of the SP load, even if they don't necessarily go over the SP load. They may lag computers because there's just so many particles moving at the same time that computers may not just be able to handle it, and people just are not able to appreciate the storyboards at all if they just don't run properly on their computers. Another criticism is that some storyboards are just way too overwhelming and just aren't really part of the beatmap anymore and rather just a massive exercise to show how amazing storyboards can be and it's just staying away from being a storyboard and more being some exhibitional exercise. In my personal opinion, even though these massive storyboards are really impressive to watch, I kind of prefer the smaller, simpler storyboards. My favourite map of 2016 has a storyboard. It's a map by Karen called Ima Alukidasu Kimie. I'll link it in the description probably. But the storyboard on that is fairly simplistic. The most complicated part of it is the particle effects on the lyrics, but apart from that it uses mostly a slideshow kind of thing with screenshots from a VN, I'm not sure which one exactly. but. The way that flows with the music is just beautiful in my opinion, and personally I really want to see more storyboards like that. Storyboards which are simple, but just fit with the music and the mapping just so beautifully. This is just down to preferences in storyboarding styles though. I have nothing against Exile or his storyboards, I think they are absolutely amazing. I have no idea how to replicate. Excel stuff, they are just way beyond me, at least for now. But I prefer the storyboards which are an accompaniment to the map rather than better appreciated as a separate video that just has music over it. Which leads me on to the second problem with storyboarding is that it's so much easier to create spectrums with storyboards due to people creating spectrum generators. If you know what a spectrum is, if you watch music videos, usually EDM music, you see like bars going up and down in time with the music frequencies and such. That's a spectrum, or what I'm calling a spectrum anyway. These days, storyboards with spectrums are so common because of these generators that it's kind of like hearing Wonderwall at a local band's gig. It's probably getting a bit too easy to create these storyboards and it's not original and it's not creative, I think, is the main problem that people are having with these Spectrum storyboards. 
People have to start somewhere, I admit, and it's great to see new storyboarders coming into the mix. Storyboards right now are just way too underappreciated and I don't think we can not have enough of them. I can't really suggest any solutions to having more exposure to storyboards apart from encouraging people to play with storyboards on, even if you play at 95% dim, which is what I personally go at. As well as the osb.moe website, there are also people who are making videos of these storyboards and uploading to YouTube. There's the storyboard showcase series by the OS Academy, and then there's also the How Beautiful Can OS Be series by Warpic. When OS becomes fully open source, I can imagine so much more potential for storyboarding. There are so many limitations right now, for example, you can't easily blur or add special filters to sprites and storyboards, and it also limits the types of transitions you can do apart from just the simple sliding stuff. I could possibly even see us replacing video editors for creating music videos, if these things are at all possible for an open source us. But for now, for the amount of effort that goes into storyboarding, I want people to appreciate it more and more. To finish this off, I want to mention the osp.moes I once again. It's still a work in progress, but as well as showcases, there are plenty of resources to help people learn how to storyboard, and even if you're not a storyboarder, I really recommend that you check their website out.